Hello. 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 Oh, that is very strong. <laughs> is it? Very strong. Yeah, no, that's not really, really strong. <laughs> mm. Like that will get you. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's good. It's still at Bricot Manor. Mm. It's Bricot Manor. And the guy here that lives here has given us a nice little welcome. So we've gone and bought some of his wine. And this is where Malaki shot some mortar runs. Hmm. Camp Geronimo. St. Mary Cookies. Bob 
Bob Singh, uh, the commanding officer of the 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment. And he was right. I should have had you all shot. <laughs> uh, but that, that's a unique experience to be able to bring somebody who's real uh, to life. And I was very privileged that his family uh, was still around and was able to send me recordings of that North Carolina brawl that he typically had. And I was able to listen to it on tape and interpret that uh, as an actor. Uh, so a privilege uh, not only to lead these men, but to portray the guy who did in 1944. <laughs> Hi, I'm Robin Lee, Athletes Edward B. Heffron. Um, I think when I first got the job, what it meant was that I got a really good job. And I knew these were real people, and they were war heroes, and I thought, this is going to be cool, this will be fun. And I didn't really realise quite how much of an impact it would have on my life, not only professionally, and certainly my profound impact professionally, but um, personally, you know, getting to obey was a real privilege and an honour. Um, I think just, just being around him, not particularly in any great paternal way, you know, our relationship wasn't like that, we just, we would hang out, but when you hang out with someone like that, you learn what real, true humility and heroism and selflessness is, really, when you, when you spend a lot of time with someone or spend some time with someone who's done what he's done, finished it, gone home, kind of got on with his life without any real fun for him, um, that's, that teaches you a lot. Um, and like the rest of the guys, from there on it's been a, a real learning experience about, you know, the impact that these men and the whole war had on the world going forward. And yeah, it was a real privilege. And I got to meet all these guys. So that's one of the best things. Genuinely. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Shane Taylor. I'm playing uh, Eugene Doc Road. Um, what did it mean for me? Well, a uh, huge responsibility. I mean, I, that dawned on me very early on. And, um, but I suppose the moment I try not to think about that because it's not taken on. Um, but uh, I think the moment it connected and made sense to me was in, I think, Paris when we travelled down to Normandy. Big bus, and I managed to meet Doc Rowe's daughters, and uh, uh, and I'm I'm with his grandson, who's one of my closest and best friends. So that gives you an indication of how connected and, and how much it means uh, this much time on. But I was on the bus and I met them, and uh, it was a very emotional moment. Put everything in perspective, all the hard work. Um, and that's something I'll never forget. So it's a, it's it's more it's, it's been more than a job. It was more than a job, um, and I'm forever grateful. You know. Hello, I'm uh, McGarren. I played Robert Popeye Wynn. Oh, man, it was an absolute pleasure uh, to portray him, try and tell a tiny bit of his story, hopefully try and do it to justice. Uh, I had some footage and some recordings of, of Popeye uh, to, to try and help me a little bit. And yeah, I think I think that speak for everyone. I think we did a pretty good job. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't really know what to say. It was just an absolute pleasure and it still is to this day. And I'm, I'm, I'm honored to have had the chance to be given the opportunity to do that uh, and hang out with these boys for the rest of my life, I guess. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, it was a pleasure. <laughs> it was a pleasure. My name is Renee Moreno and I play Joseph Ramirez. And uh, it was amazing. It was amazing. Um, my character was a uh, quiet man as told by a lot of the veterans who we met. Um, 
didn't like what he was doing, but he had to do it, and he did it well. Um, so the job of trying to somebody who kind of disappeared right after the war was a little bit difficult because there was not much said about him after the war. Um, history, trying to find any kind of relatives or anything, was, uh, it's hard to find. So just trying to do this job as best as possible and as true as possible was our responsibility. And as Dill kept, I uh, said, we better not mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm Bob this way and I think it's it. Went into the next one. It was around the home of February 2017 when it passed. And I don't think to think about that and consider the responsibility that I had. And I guess it's best summed up in that very few people can say what they did made a difference. <coughs> Every one of so many people. And he was one of them. And it was a, a great honor probably depending on my career, certainly to date, and I had to guess the rest of my life to sort of portray him on the screen. That's about it. <laughs> I mean, George Khalil, I played Jim Allen, and I think my first reaction was just, holy shit, am I not the call. But it's really on three levels for, for me and my band of brothers, which is no particular order. You, uh, you're playing a real human being, and then you're perhaps betraying the last just war in history where you really get to see when good people get together and say, right, enough is enough what people can accomplish. And I have no idea what it's like. But then on a personal level, Captain Di actually has been through all these things. So we were with people who have been shot at and have been through the same shit, albeit in, in a different <laughs> era. And it was a pretty amazing thing. Hi there, I'm Ian Bailey. I played David King in Webster. Uh, one is the first thing, unlike a couple of the guys who have mentioned that their characters kind of, uh, you know, there wasn't a lot left, I had the opposite. My, my, my fellow wrote a great book. That was a real gift for me. When I finished reading it, I thought to myself, well, I was well cast. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the rest pretty easy, <laughs> relatively speaking. And then over the years, I'm continually surprised by the, the response from meeting while walking down a street in Amsterdam, meeting a Polish man who thanked me immensely for, for our efforts. I'm going on a USO tour where I thought the soldiers would think we were the joke, you know, the actors pretending to be soldiers, they would take us seriously at all. It was the opposite. They thought we were just doing a good service for them, and I really, really, really appreciated it. And meeting people like today, a guy I met who uh, had seen the show and said go for a hundred times, and I'm continually surprised. <laughs> I think, my God, that's a lot of hours spent <laughs> watching a television program, but I continually remind myself and am reminded by everyone else I come in contact with about this show that it is it is that special. It does warrant so many viewings by some people, and, and it is a special part of history. And this is an amazing day to be here all together, all of us, this week, doing this thing. <laughs> and it's a great, great honor, this, this mentor of ours, what he did for us these, these weeks in boot camp. We got primed with it. was a very, very important part of our, 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 our growth as human beings. I'll, I'll take it that far. So thank you. And thanks to all of you for having me. You've also heard enough from me, so I won't take up too much of your time. It's interesting that Ian should talk about something being well cast, because I never met Harry. Harry passed away before the series started. Um, and one of the things that, and I'm sure you all have these stories too, I don't want to get too mystical about things, but there were just various parts of the puzzle that are coming to me even now. I even had, I remember meeting Bay Pifferon on set and him saying, you're doing a great job, it's Harry, you're just like him. I'm thinking, how? <laughs> Let me figure this out. And, and, and the two words that jumped out from the book to me were reluctant officer. He was a reluctant officer who was busted down to private for 
fighting a few times. And it may surprise you, I don't even think you guys know this, but this rap scallion was head boy at this school. And I hated it. I hated being given the responsibility of being head boy. And these two words just kept a reluctant officer. A reluctant I just thought, wow, that's something else. And then you take into the fact little ingredients like the fact that I knew Damien before. We got on, we were not good friends, but we were friends enough. That stuff happens by accident, doesn't it? Anyway, I seem to know somebody that I've never met more and more every year. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ben Kaplan and I play Walter Smokey Gordon from uh, Band of Brothers. Uh, yeah, to go back to the original question to kind of try and reflect what all of these guys have said already, to bring something new, but um, I mean, it absolutely was a real honour to be part of this show. Um, a lot of it's been said already, but I mean, it's, it's created a bond between me and a person I never got the chance to meet, and I felt like I had a connection, even though uh, Walter died in 1998, so I got the chance to meet him, but I met his family. I have a very special bond with his family, and we still see each other, you know, every so often, and when we, when we do, it's a, it's a very special thing. Um, a huge responsibility to, to portray him in this particular series, but to sort of feel like, as well as obviously to try and do his story justice, to try and just do, you know, every uh, veteran's story justice by trying to portray bravery and humanity, um, which uh, I, I feel on such a deep level because I now have children and I feel the responsibility to be able to pass that story on to a new generation, which is what I think this TV series has actually done. Um, it's the greatest history lesson I've ever had. And uh, when I come to things like this and I meet real veterans, I feel like I, I have a sense of what they went through and that respect will carry me through for the rest of my life. So coming here to this amazing uh, event uh, is very, very special. And the, the other thing is, I felt it was a, 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 it wasn't really an acting task by any means. You know, going to boot camp and going through those experiences meant that by the time we actually got to shooting this amazing series, I didn't feel like I was an actor. I felt like I was just trying to do justice to a sense of what those guys were going through in those kind of situations. And, you know, we just started shooting uh, scenes and, and we, just, we just fell into line and we just, we just got on with the job. So it's, it's been an absolute honor to be part of it and to meet these amazing group of actors who, you know, will know each other for the rest of our lives and will carry that bond through, you know, through, through the rest of our journeys together, which, which again, is a very special thing. So, um, as I say, it's a, it was an amazing thing to be part of, and I, I thank my lucky stars that I, was, that I was in the show in the first place. Thank you. Mark Lawrence, I played William Buddy Duplin. Uh, he died on the 5th of October 1944 in Langdon, Holland. Uh, there is not a day that I don't think about him. I mean, probably not half a day that I don't think about him. I think about him every day. Um, he's been such a huge part of my life, and this is a guy that I've never met. Uh, I met my wife because of him. Uh, she was a fan of the series. We got in contact and we got married. Uh, I now live in Colorado, which is where Buddy Duplin was from. Um, he's with me every day. Uh, I think they all deserve to be immortal. And this show, luckily, helps them be immortal. I also want to say thank you to Dale and I just for giving me the tools to do that. Um, Tom Brook also said they're a great generation and he said the right thing. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Sat the brain I played uh, Francis James Um Yeah, again, like Ben said, I think it's pretty much been covered uh, what everyone said. Um, and like Mark, um, I never got to meet Frank, uh, but he's a very special part of my life. We have some similarities with us, Irish and Italian. Um, and same birthdays, which is good. Uh, and Again, he's, he's part of my life, uh, always will be, uh, made the ultimate sacrifice, um, which is a very, very small part of something that is very, very big. We got a small glimpse of something that was so extraordinary that you know, going through it, these guys wouldn't have understood. 
but they just got the job done. And we got a glimpse of it, and Dale helped us get the job done. And it's really something that's going to stay with me for the rest of my life. Um, and I'm truly, truly honored to be here, be part of it, see you guys, and uh, yeah, thank you. Hi, I'm um, Christian Black. I played uh, Walter Hendricks. Um, these guys have basically said everything I wanted to say. Um, I couldn't think of anything to say, to be honest. I've you covered everything. Um, the one thing I would say is that I became a still photographer. I don't know if any of you know this, but I became a still photographer in the movie industry uh, because of working on this show. And I've been doing that for the last 20 years, and 19 years. Um, and I, I will work today off for casting years. And with Chuck, there wasn't a whole lot there. There was a 
few times or a few instances that have been written down by his, you know, his, his fellow um, brothers uh, or, or by his seer. And, but for me, it was like, how do I, I don't know much about this guy. I knew where he came from, he was kind of boring, like the dice. And so and I'm quite to play poker. So, you know, those things I sort of found some connection with for myself. But more importantly, you know, over the period of doing boot camp and then the show, what I found was that it was because of my relationship with all the other cast members, my brothers, you know, on set every day. And it wasn't really an acting job, like Ben said, it was more of an endurance job. Um, because you don't need to act, you just need to be there and feel it and be a part of it. And your character, my character, it kind of came from my relationship with everybody else and how they related to me, whether they were my, you know, because I was a, a star, star sergeant by the end, but the relationship you have with everybody is sort of what defines how, who you are, how you feel in that relationship, in, in this company. And, you know, and you are immersed every day you're on set. You know, there's a lot going on. Buildings are coming down around, there are tanks, there are jeeps, and, and even the camera may be moving along. You're not even really on the camera, but you are definitely still running around and things are going on around you, and you're, you're in a, a war-like environment. And shells, bullets flying down the back of your neck from the machine gun next to you or whatever. So you are immersed, and you do lose yourself in that, and you do, there is trepidation and fear. Although you're not going to die, it is an extreme environment. So I think for me, that was, that was the, the relationship I had with Chuck was I was just reliving in whatever way I could, not a war, but in this making of the show, what happened with us as, as a company, as a, as a, as a band of brothers, what, what we had that experience together. And so I think that's why, for, well, for me, you know, going through it all um, was extraordinary because I really felt as close as I could to what he must have and felt like in life. Um, and so that was a real, that was a, that was a real blessing. Of,
and I didn't understand a word. It was just <laughs> English, Cajun, French. And, but uh, we set the bar. I had a, um, a meeting with Tom, and we kind of set the bar of where we wanted to, to, to put that Cajun thing, because I know that was, that was a kind of license, as, as you know. I mean, there were certain things to, taken in a direction um, for dramatic purposes. And I think, I mean, you, you were okay with it. You were, you were okay, but we got the, we got the okay. And, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, it was just an amalgam of stuff, and it all went towards creating, uh, you know, the character that uh, I hope I hope well. Well, man, thanks, uh, buddy. And I hope you're going to be man enough one day to run Curry <laughs> Yeah, I have. And I don't know, any, any of the others get down to go and do that? Okay, it, was, it was difficult to do. Uh, Curry is a, is a mountain foothill, I guess, uh, in uh, Georgia at Camp Cole. And it was the uh, want of uh, the commanding officer of Easy Company. Uh, you probably all know this, I'm assuming you've seen the series. Uh, to, to run up Curry, and uh, he did that one time. This was before Dick Winters became commanding officer. He did that one time, man, uh, after having fed the entire company huge amounts of greasy spaghetti. So the whole trail of the mountainside of Tacoa was lined with spaghetti puke, <laughs> which is a wonderful thing, and if you're running it, uh, you get that impression. So we, we didn't actually get, be able to run Tacoa or run uh, Curry Heat itself, but we adopted that model as uh, 506 did Curry Heat. And we did a lot of running during the training, some of which was uphill, and uh, so they got a little taste of it, but they didn't, except for me, they didn't actually get down there and, and run uh, Curry Heat itself at Tacoa. Does that answer your question? Very well.
They're intelligent kids. They'll get what I'm saying mentally, but they'll never get what I mean in their heart and in their guts. In order to do that, I've got to take them way out of their comfort zone and make them live for a short period of time the life of the selfless, tough life of the soldier. So that's the overall concept. That's what I wanted to do. I refined it for years. I got it down to where you could do it in a relatively short period of time. But when you shorten the period of time in training, you have to increase the intensity, which means that I'm a horrible, mean son of a bitch and will continue <laughs> to be that way until I can teach them what I mean. The neat thing, and especially with these guys, what a marvelous cast. I mean, I wouldn't have said that 17 years ago. I would have said, what a gaggle of maggots <laughs> I have been inflicted on it. But I was wrong about that, as I was wrong about most of the people I've trained. They emerge. And what happens is you see a new human being emerge. You see a new human being emerge who feels the community of a military outfit who understands that there's something more important than himself. And that's the guy who's left, the guy who's right, and the mission ahead. That's what you have to make them understand. In order to do that, the best way to do that is simply to reduce them all to the lowest common denominator. To take their bodies and shake all of the civilian nonsense bullshit out of it. And then fill it up with the right stuff. And if they're great kids, like these all are, if they're great kids, they're like little sponges. And when that knowledge and that realization comes to them through their hearts, and through their guts, suddenly that sponge grows and emerges into something new and something wonderful. And it makes them understand their characters. It gives them an insight into who they're trying to portray. And most importantly for an actor, what were the motivations? That's a word you hear a lot in the acting community. What were the motivations of the characters they played? And all the research they did, we put that in context for them. And said, here, this is who that guy was. This is why he acted the way he did. This is why he did the things he did. Now, the question then becomes, did we do it? Well, <coughs> yes. yeah, I guess so. <laughs> they are my children, and will always be. I've spent most of my life raising other people's children, and these are some special kids. It never ceases to amaze me and to touch me when they all come together. It's like it might have been 17, 18 years ago, but they're talking to me as though like they just left 10 minutes ago. They absolutely just pick up the conversation and everybody knows what they're talking about. That's a wonderful quality of these men. I am more proud and honored to have been part of building them than I can ever express to you. But the important thing for you to understand is not me, it's them. They took what we offered and built it into portrayals of one of World War II's most famed outfits. And they did it in a project that will outlive and outlast all of us. They did that. And I'm very, very proud of it. Thank you.